This is Dr. Nancy Mullen again. If you have watched video number three, I was talking about the BHMT pathway. And what I didn't say that I meant to say about that pathway is that there are certain B vitamins that are absolutely critical and minerals to that pathway. So I'm going to just show it to you again briefly. And I'm going to point out, I, I did mention that folate, this pathway, once again, is in my website under about and, and then important links and information. And, um, and I just want to show you that there, there are certain, there are certain minerals, vitamins and minerals that are absolutely necessary for the function of this pathway. Folate and B6 there at 11 o'clock at, at uh, 8 o'clock, folate and B2, well, maybe that's 9 o'clock, folate and B2 um, at, at about 7 o'clock, folate and B6, and magnesium. Serine at 7 o'clock is the link to the Krebs energy production cycle. Uh, that cycle is not depicted. It's just it's, it's just depicted in a line. Uh, but it, so this cycle is important for energy formation, and that you have enough serine. Sorry. Um, anyway, that's all I wanted to say about this further. Before I go on <laughs> to um, what Dr. Amy calls the long route to methylation. The long route to methylation is the primary route to, in to methylation. And here it is. Um, let me get this. It, it is also, once again, on my website, Nancy. M U L L A N M D at dot M U L L A N M D dot com. Okay, so homocysteine, instead of going down the CBS pathway or through the BHMT pathway, this time goes around the, the uh, circumference of the cycle that it is depicted in and um, goes through the MTR, MTRR area. Once again, extremely low tech, but the best I can do. Okay, in order for MTR and MTRR to work, cycle number three, the folate cycle, has to work. Up at the top, tetrahydrofolate, okay, when the methionine cycle is working in a clockwise direction, the folate cycle, when they're going in their positive directions, the folate cycle is going in a counterclockwise direction. Let me tell you that the biochemistry of folate metabolism is extremely correct. Uh, extremely complex. Between tetrahydrofolate, let me get this, between tetrahydrofolate and 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate, there are at least a hundred reactions if you're looking. So this is an extremely simplified version of this pathway. And all along this pathway, vitamins, like I pointed out, B6 and folate, and magnesium and zinc and potassium, vitamins and minerals are necessary to move this pathway along. Believe me, um, I'm, I apologize for the low tech nature of this, but doing anything else was going to take so much input that we just, let's get the basics here. So anyway, tetrahydrofolate, 
um, is converted into 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate. And then MTHFR takes the 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate and makes it into 5-methylfolate. The 5-methylfolate goes up, so to speak, and attaches to MTR. The um, homocysteine goes up and attaches to MTR. And then B12, in its reduced state, goes up and attaches to MTR. And when all those conditions are present, the 5-methylfolate group from 5-methyltetrahydrofolate is transferred onto homocysteine, which makes homocysteine back into methionine again. So, um, the and the job of MTRR is to keep the B12 in the area in its reduced state because it is because in order for for MTR to work correctly and uh, there must be reduced B12 in the area. MTR is a is an enzyme that is deactivated by very, very minute amounts of toxic metals in the area. Mercury, arsenic, cadmium, all very nanogram amounts of those toxic metals will stop MT, the enzyme MTR from performing its in, important function It'll stop it cold. Uh, and that's why metal, de metal detox, that's why heavy metals are a big problem for that enzyme, the MTR enzyme. And uh, many, many people have toxic metals on board. And this reaction, the MTR-MTRR reaction, happens mainly in the liver, uh, some in the kidney, and, and some in the brain, but not, uh, not much. It mainly happens in the liver. And when MTR, when the MTR enzyme is poisoned by toxic metals, then the liver detox pathways do not function well. So you have a negative, uh, negative cycle that feeds on itself. Toxic metals enhance their own retention. And as they are retained, they interfere with liver function. So that's the deal. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stop there and go on to the next topic.